Hi, and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Sci-Fi Trading Company. This is a game that is in the command genre of spaceship simulation, and in this you take on the role of a captain who is piloting a ship, in this case a freighter, and you give orders to your crew to effectively manage the ship. So in some sense, it's more of a management simulation. You never actually take direct control of the ship and steer and fire the weapons or set the power levels. You give orders to your crew. Um, this game is set in the 35th century, and the idea is that the universe is sort of this vast place, and humanity has advanced, and there are now a bunch of large superpowers like the Alliance and the Federation, and they're not really competing with each other. They're really just large government organizations that you join to provide local government services and to police the area and provide law enforcement. And the universe is still a very vast place uh, at this time in the setting of this universe. And um, there's still the, sort of the conflict between good and evil. It doesn't really happen so much in the civilized areas where these governments are present, but more on the frontier where people are exploring and pushing out. Um, there's still sort of the, the pirates and the, the people that are still trying to profit from um, taking advantage of, of the settlers that are kind of moving out there. And um, in this case, there is a, a group called Parvin um, Frontier, and they have set up a mining colony, and they're sort of on the edge of, uh, edge of space. They've tried to join uh, several of these large superpowers, and they're just too far away, and there's just not enough manpower and cost, you know, it costs too much to really um, police the small number of people that are out there on the frontier. And so um, they're being raided by pirates, and your job as a cargo pilot um, is to take, uh, to take supplies to them. And you're kind of the entrepreneurial captain. You, uh, you've realized that taking a, just a regular cargo ship out there, you're, you're going to get attacked by these pirates, and it's, you know, your ship is probably going to get raided. They're, they're not, these pirates are not so much interested in actually killing you. They really want to take your cargo and take your stuff. So they're really more about disabling your ship and taking your stuff um, and making it so it's not um, desirable to go out there. And so over time, um, a number of ships have been attacked and the cost of goods at the mining colony has gone up. And you, being the entrepreneurial captain, have decided instead of buying a new cargo ship, you're going to buy a used cargo ship, and you're going to retrofit it with weapons and scanners, and you're going to be able to fight off these pirates. And to do this, you start off by hiring a crew. You have a weapons officer, a scanning officer, um, a navigator, an engineer, and someone who's head of repair. And I'm not sure how they're why that's not part of engineering, um, but they are, are sort of considered a different department on your ship. And so to start off the game, we'll select, you know, select our crew, and we'll have a number of options. I think there's six for each position. The, um, this particular version of the game is the DOS version of the game that came out in 1986. I think it's more popularly played on the Commodore 64 and the Atari. Um, but this is the version that's that's available on Steam, and it's also available on GOG if you want to check it out. The Obviously, we're dealing with uh, the four-color CGA graphics, so we have the beautiful uh, cyan, magenta, white, and black <laughs> colors here. Um, and this is actually not one of the games that's set up for composite CGA, so we're not really missing out on anything here. Um, they actually did some fairly high-detail graphics um, within the limitations of the color palette. So um, this is, the game plays very well. Um, the graphics actually don't look too bad as long as we can kind of get past this, <laughs> this somewhat gaudy color palette. Um, but it is, the game is a lot of fun. And so to start off here, um, we get to pick sort of, this is a destination. This is really kind of the difficulty setting. So, um, we're really kind of choosing, you know, how hard we want the game to be and how long we want the game to be. 
This the first mission is kind of a little bit of a training mission. It's not too too hard. Um, this will probably take about 15 minutes to play, but we'll play through play through the first one here. And to start off with, we have to choose our weapons officer. So we have six candidates for this position, and we can we can look at their profile here, and it'll tell us that they're good at certain things. So in this case, he's an expert on the cannon, good with uh, sonic missiles and battle thermos. Um, the ship has four weapon systems. So we have cannons, blasters, missiles, and thermos, and he's apparently good with three of those. Um, he's 47 years old, and let's see, studied history. Some of this stuff is just kind of fluff. Some of it is actually clues about how well they'll perform. Instead of giving hard stats, the game talks about a lot of things in sort of fluff terms, and it's really up to the player to uh, sort of figure out, you know, how these how each of these uh, characters behave. Um, another thing about the characters too is that although we will give them orders and you know we're nominally managing the ship, they can take their own initiative. So if we ignore them long enough, um, depending on how much of an initiative they have, they will um, they will sort of take the initiative. Like right there, the game took the... I forgot about that. If you sit here too long, the game will actually start a demo mode. So um, all we have to do is push a key to get out of that. But we can kind of take a look at the uh, the candidates that are here. Al looks suspiciously like Spock. Um, he is a, a an Olero. Uh, Alerio, I guess that's kind of the... This universe is Vulcan. Um, but he's an expert on blasters, battle thermos... Um, a wizard on the cannon, so he's good with everything except the missiles. Um, I have tended to uh, tended to take Nilo, but I'm going to take him in this one because I've never played with him before. Um, some of these are outright, uh, they sound like outright bad candidates. Um, Dragulas. <laughs> very, creative, uh, very creative names for these. So he's good with the very good with education, studied astronomy, junior scan manager for three years. So he's kind of a low-level scanning officer. Uh, strong telepathic senses, responds to commands well, reacts well under pressure. These are good. Poor verbal communicator. He's not going to speak up and, and communicate with us. Weak performer with most tracking lock systems. So that's not good for us. Um, one of the things that we need to be able to do is to be able to lock onto these ships before we can fire. And if we can't lock onto them, then we're going to have a tough time. They're going to be sitting there shooting at us and we're not going to be able to shoot back. Expert on tracking lock. Only fair on info scanner. So we're not going to know what we're shooting at, but we'll be able to shoot it. <laughs> uh, let's see. What about Blue Stan? Good with radar scopes, superior on XTN mid-range info scanner. Can't handle stress. Well, that's not what we want. <laughs> we're gonna we're absolutely gonna be in a stressful situation. Displays good ability with tracking lock-on. Okay with info scanner. Okay, so we'll be able to scan. Seven years at Transjovian Institute. Good with most scanners, also rated good on tracking lock system. And then Mike is tops on tracking lock system, intergalactic troubleshooting expert. You know what? I kind of liked uh, Nargo here. Displays good ability with 400 with 434 lock system. Okay with XTN info scanner. We'll go with that. Um, the navigation department. I've looked through these. I've tended to go with Nick uh, in the past. Certified expert at evasive maneuvers. Extremely fast reaction times. Um, strengths, good listener and communicator, seems to be reliable. He's been he's been fairly good to us. This guy, if I remember, excellent risk analysis of XTN mid-range info scanners, expert interpreter, has a strong liking for joking around, poor at evasive maneuvers. We are gonna we are gonna need to be able to dodge. Um, inexperienced, has a temper if challenged. Yeah, that's that's what we want in our crew. Um, Let's see, qualifications, best quadrant risk analyzer in the business, good evasive navigator, that's 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 a positive. Strength, understands many different alien languages, friendly and loyal, quick thinker, 
has a long history of strange behaviors and nervousness, extremely frail. Um, does that mean he's going to die <laughs> very easily? You can't actually lose your lose crew members. Um, and I think you end up with a limited uh, control of those stations if you actually lose a crew member. I haven't had that happen in the beginner scenarios. Um, good risk evaluation ability has knowledge of current quadrant equipment. Chief navigational officer of VAX 5 missions. Cool attitude. Slow response time. Yeah, we don't want that. And Yenix. Sometimes a dreamer can easily be distracted. Very quick judgment. Expert radar, vocation, and vector analyzer operator. Good at evasive maneuvers. You know what? I'm gonna take we're gonna take a risk here on Bronxag. Um, he seems to be seems to be fairly good. I've never played with him before. I hope he doesn't die. <laughs> um, this is our engineering department, and I wanted to pick this VX4 robot one time, and. Uh, Although individual units vary, this model generally performs slower than most in weaknesses. Not uh, not really what you want for, for a repair, repair guy or an engineering guy. We want somebody who's able to like change the power and move the power on the ship so we can balance stuff. I think I've tended to go with Anthony in the past. Expert technical knowledge, very good programming abilities. Extremely quick, effective communicator very loyal and friendly, tends to be worrisome, and that's okay in this case because he'll probably decide to do stuff on his own. Um, good under stress, very friendly, but keeps to himself. That doesn't matter. Loyal, has telepathic abilities. That doesn't really matter. Excitable, has a temper when challenged. Rather frail. So that sounds like he's going to die, too. <laughs> um, Friglonk. Uh, let's see. Very resilient, loyal, and very serious about his job. Keeps himself, keeps to himself generally. Excitable nature and has a violent temper when threatened or challenged. Wow, do we really want this guy on the ship? Um, many exploratory missions with Earth teams. Strengths above average ruggedness, so they're they're going to be survivable. Very good with vac vac droid communication, so they're going to be able to work with the, the bots. Um, that we have repair bots on the ship that they have to control. Uh, can be overly deliberate with her duties. Doesn't like risky or stressful situations. Well, that's that's what we're heading into here. I think we're gonna go with Anthony. He's uh, he's been good in the past. And let's see, Anxy. Who is that? Like anxious. Doesn't like to be interrupted or hurried while working. Well, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, this is a high stress mission, my friend. Um, we are, we are going into combat, absolutely. Uh, several cross-galaxy trading missions. This Vag droid is extremely reliable and loyal, very friendly. I think I've used him in the past, and he's done a good job. Sometimes can overwork himself, um, is not self-motivating. And so this is one of those things where he you actually have to pay attention to damage systems and tell him what to do. He won't take action on his own or, or do it very rarely, but I'm going to go with him because he's fast. So, this is our crew. We have Al for weapons, Nargo for scanning, Bronx Sag for navigator, Anthony is our engineer, and T3XR9 is our repair droid. We have to go 60 parsecs and we'll get $70 million payout for this. Um, and I guess we're going to Renlosen Freiblutz. Freiblutz. <laughs> Uh, very whimsical names. So now we're in our ship and we're at the space dock and we are ready to depart. So we're going to, um, there's really no, so it says here you have enough weapons and fuel and supplies for your journey. There's really nothing that we're going to run out of. Um, I don't think you can actually fire enough, um, fire enough things to, uh, to run out of weapons or things like that. Mainly we're on the clock here. Um, so welcome aboard. We're gonna look at our um, our routes here and see like what they look like at our current ETA. It doesn't actually tell us because we're not moving yet, so we do need to pick up the speed here. Um, risk of five. You know what? Let's uh, let's take course D. So we'll rank course D as priority one, and let's accelerate to. I think we're going to be capped out at four, but we're going to set speed to six for the moment. I think we need to go to engineering and turn off some things. We're also going to go to our scanning uh, officer here 
and see what we've got. So we've got one scout. He's friendly. Um, we've already got a lock on him. We don't really need to do much with him. We're going to go to engineering and let's see what our status is. All of this stuff is enabled. We're going to turn off um, all of our weapon systems here. We don't need them at the moment because we're not in combat. And you'll notice that the status on these has changed to request RQC, request to cancel. So they don't turn off immediately. Um, I've made the request to this guy to turn them off. And um, he's going to uh, he's going to work on that for us. But um, it... Uh, it doesn't happen instantaneously, and we've accidentally turned off uh, or requested to turn off Engine 2. We're going to cancel that request. Um, we could even, to some extent, turn off the shields. So now we've gotten up to speed 6, just turning off the weapons. Shield batteries are charged to 50%, so we can recharge the shields as they take damage. Emergency batteries at 38 seconds. Let's take a look at our navigation, or sorry, our scanning, and see... Oh, so we have an unknown, so let's examine B at priority one. He's a friendly, but we don't know what kind of ship he is. And I've heard that the type of ship will tell you information about it in terms of um, what kind of weapons are good against it. Here we can see that this scout, if we were to attack the scout, the suggested weapon on the far right is BL, so that it suggests that we use the blaster, and that's what would be most effective. There's no damage to these, they're type friendly. Uh, if we shot them, they would turn into foes and they would engage us. But really these are kind of distractors. Um, and also up here on the status above exam and that S in that panel tells us that we have a message from the scanning person. So without orders, I assume some responsibility for weapons and target analysis. So they're telling us that <laughs> we did not give them an order to scan something, but they have already, already done that. Um, we've also learned that this unknown uh, ship B has, is actually a shuttle, and they would be susceptible to missiles if we were to shoot them. Um, the PO tells you whether they're, tells you their location relative to the ship, so it'll tell you port, starboard, aft, or forward, and then the range is whether they're in weapons range or out of weapon range. So we have the scout that's hanging to our port side and he's out of weapons range and the shuttle is in front of us but uh, within weapons range. And you'll notice that the scanner is the scanner is automatically switching. We don't really have control over or sorry the view screen is switching. We don't really have control over that. So it just kind of points to wherever uh, wherever it thinks is best. So we're going to take a look. Um, we're still on our messages here but let's go into navigation and see. Whoa somebody's shooting at us. Hang on here. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, we're getting attacked. Okay, so let's uh, use the weapons. Well, let's think through this. We got to scan, examine, see priority one. So let's figure out what to shoot at it. And then let's go to engineering. And as soon as we figure out what to shoot, um, we'll get some in, we'll get some weapons online here. It's a Zeltode. Now, if I knew what a Zeltode was, um, we'd be able to tell, you know, I'd be able to tell pretty quickly what to shoot at it. I don't know them that well. So, come on, scanner person. We need to know what to fire at them. Blasters. Okay, so we will enable, let's see what we've got. Enable blasters. Blasters. RF. So enable F. And so they'll get those. We'll tell our weapons officer to fire priority one blasters at C. I hope I remembered that right or we're going to shoot a friendly. <laughs> Let's see. Scanning display. C is our Zeltode foe. So as soon as the weapons come online, yeah, there we go. So now we're starting to shoot back. Blasters are active. They have blasters. Oh no, they're shooting at us. Are, are our blasters not online? We're saving power, but we're getting shot at. Blasters are online. Okay, now we're, yeah, we're shooting at them now. Good. So we've taken four shots at them. 
And if we go to our navigation, or sorry, if we go to our um, scanning department, we can see we haven't done any damage to them. They haven't really done any damage to us either, so <laughs> kind of a stalemate here. Ah, oh, come on, get him. I think at this point, also, we'll bring another... Um, we will bring the, uh, the weapon systems, the missile systems online. So let's see, missiles are E, so let's enable E. And we'll fire at will missiles at target. Uh, this was target C, priority two. But let's see, it looks like we've got a couple more uh, folks that are Oh, there is no D or E. I wonder what that was. So our weapons officer has something to tell us. Acknowledge weapons officer. Reporting all requested firing orders have been accomplished. I don't know, Al. Uh, <laughs> it seems like we're still being shot at, buddy. Okay, I think we... Oh, no, we didn't destroy him. It's interesting that there's these two other... Is there damage to the ship? No. Scan. Examine D, priority one. Examine E, priority two. So we've got two new guys that are shooting at us. And they're not in the display because they haven't been... We didn't order the scan for them yet. That's why they're there. So we now have a lock on D. These are foes. We're going to have the weapons officer fire at will uh, missiles at D, priority one. Fire at will uh, blasters at D, priority two. So let's take this guy out. Um, and we'll switch, we'll switch weapons as needed. Okay, so you do have those on the list. Status. We are scanning those. Our scanning officer is also not the most efficient either. We need to know, we need to know what to shoot at these guys. Now in the past I've taken Neela as my weapons officer and she's been, she's pretty good. Al here, I don't know, I don't know buddy. <laughs> you're not, uh, you're not taking these guys out. So without knowing any more, you know what, we're gonna bring, um, we're gonna bring the other weapons online. We're just gonna fire everything at them. Bring G online and bring H online. That's gonna slow us down because we're not gonna be able to run at uh, speed six. But um, fire at will, cannons at target. Oh, we got him, we got him. Okay, okay, great. So let's see, what's the status? We still have target E and now we have a target F. We have two foes. Um, we still haven't figured out what that guy is, but we do have a lock on him. Let's examine target F, priority one. Since we can't seem to figure out what E is, we are gonna have, oh man, everybody's everybody's got messages for us. Notice that the shields on the left side or on the, the port side have turned purple. We've taken a little bit of damage. Um, we're gonna fire at will cannons at F, priority one, fire at will. Uh, thermos at F, priority two. We've also got another guy who's shown up. We're gonna slow down a little bit. Um, because the faster we go, the more likely we are uh, to run into stuff. We're also going to start evasive maneuvering. 
And then let's acknowledge some of these messages and see what's going on. The weapon systems, reporting, no, we haven't we haven't taken care of everything yet. Enemy target sighted, yes, they sure have been. Navigation, our port retro is not functional. Okay, so we need repair. Um, all requested repairs are completed. Navigation, I can't manage evasive maneuvering because they're not functioning retros. Okay, so we gotta go, we gotta go repair. Um, let's see, status, what's damaged? Oh man, we've taken some damage. Okay, so let's get the retros. Um, we'll assign two robo droids to B. Let's get those priority one. And then um, assign we get two people on life support because that's really, we don't want to die. Um, and then, oh, we've lost the aft shields too. Okay, so assign um, three robo droids to the aft shields. Now, two of the robo droids are damaged. Um, priority three. So we really need those port retros fixed. Um, we also need our weapons officer to really, really start firing at our targets here. So let's see, what's our status? Um, scanning, status, what do we got? We got two unknowns, let's examine the unknowns. Let's examine G because we don't have, uh, we don't have target lock on him yet. And the other two are friends. Well, they were friends. Examine I, priority two. Display a status. Let's go ahead and tell the weapons officer to start firing at G because they are uh, fire missiles at G, priority one. Fire at will blasters, G, priority two. Fire at will cannons, G. Priority three. So we've learned that missiles are the thing we want to shoot at target G, which is a flarkin. <laughs> and let's check on the repairs. Our forge shields have also taken some damage as well. So you can see this kind of gets a little, a little frantic. There can be a lot going on. Let's see, status. Port retros are badly damaged. Tracking lock is damaged. That's really critical. Aft shields are almost repaired. RoboDroid 5 is getting beat up. Let's see, what's our status? Are we still shooting at these? Uh, we're still shooting at we need lock and that's because we don't have the lock so you know what let's make um, the tracking lock priority one assign three droids to the tracking lock priority one so that's got to be that's got to be our priority because we can't we can't sit here and continue to get shot at without shooting back Reactor 2, oh man. Let's see what navigation looks like. Oh, we're stopped, oh no, <laughs> oh no. Accelerate to speed three, you can't do anything, huh? We are a sitting duck. Um, and they've taken out the tracking lock. So you know what, repair, um, assign, five droids to the tracking lock priority one. And let's see if we can get the tracking lock fixed. Because if we can't shoot at these guys, we're just gonna, we're getting pummeled here. And let's see, engineering status. We have 38 seconds on the emergency batteries. Engines are enabled, but the reactors, let's see. What's the status on the 
Starboard, starboard shields are damaged. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> the tracking lock is almost back. Reactor 2 is damaged. And let's see what our, uh, what our navigation situation looks like. So we have still two days um, to these. So if we can get the if we can get the ships uh, if we can get them moving again if we can take care of these guys, which I don't know if we will. Um, things are looking bleak here. Repair status. So let's see what we got. Did we get the tracking lock back? Okay, good. Um, oh, we made it. <laughs> we limped in. Um, by all rights, we probably should uh, should not have made that. <laughs> we were getting pummeled. Um, but we were still, I guess, making a little bit of forward progress as we're getting here. And so that's the end of the uh, that's the end of the game. Um, so we made we made it with 97% of our cargo, which is a miracle. Um, cargo cost was 1.9 million. So overall we took out 5.3 million. And we killed uh, four ships on our way here, so we took out, we got 0.6 million for that. So, not uh, not bad. Um, I think in the games that I've played before, I've gone a little bit slower. And the number of enemies you encounter and how quickly you encounter them is based on how fast you go and the route that you take. So the, the, each route has risk, and the faster you go, the more quickly you encounter enemies. So there's sort of a pressure there. You want to go fast enough to get to the station, but um, but not so fast as that you encounter too many too many enemies that overwhelm you. And if you're the longer it takes, cargo starts to spoil, so your score starts to go down once you pass the certain threshold. Um, and it is possible to be destroyed. It is possible for crew members to be to be killed. We can take a look here sort of as a autopsy of what the final status of things were. So we we're still trying to get a lock on targets M and O. And um, don't know what those were because we hadn't had a chance to scan them. We did have uh, we didn't have lock on these. Engineering will tell us that um, things were powered up. Scanner the scanners were powered down. Were they damaged? Okay, so this is what was being repaired, but it doesn't tell you what was damaged still. We had a lot of damage. Um, I think I went too, probably too quick. In the past, I've stayed around speed four. Um, this time we went to speed six, and so we took a little bit more damage. But we did make it there in the end. Um, so this is a look at Sci-5 Trading Company. This game is a lot of fun. Um, I'll probably do a couple more videos on this. I'd like to try some of the harder difficulties. And my understanding is is that uh, as you as you go up um, in difficulty, you take more damage. Um, on this, I think if you play the training mission and you stay at about speed four, you don't have to turn anything off to stay at that speed. You can get through um, get through it pretty quick and pretty safely. You won't have too much trouble. Um, in this in this one, I tried to turn some stuff off and go a little bit faster, and uh, we uh, <laughs> we almost didn't make it. Um, but it's, it's a fun game and, uh, I, I highly recommend it. Um, if you like these videos and you'd like to see more like this, hit the like button. It really helps the channel out. Subscribe and you'll get notified when we push new videos out. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to do it for Sci-Fi. Thanks for watching and have a great day.